Good afternoon. Today we're going to start going over the comprehension check questions chapter from chapter one. Question seven is putting numbers in scientific notation. We're going to need a lot of practice putting numbers in scientific notation and taking them back out of scientific notation. But the one rule that you need to remember for scientific notation is that you have, can only have one number or one digit to the left of the decimal point. And so I'm going to rewrite this number so that the decimal point is right here. That would put just the five to the left. Well, in order for that to happen, my decimal is here and I have to move it. So let's count how many times it has to move. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So to write this as scientific notation, it would be 5.3 times 10 to the 10th power, because that's how many times I move my decimal. Now this one is not a super big number, it's a really small number, but we can still put it in scientific notation. When you have a number that is less than one and you put it in scientific notation, your exponent is negative because you're moving your decimal in the other direction. So for this one, I moved my decimal this way. For this one, I'm moving it that way. So I want one number to the left of the decimal, so I have to move this one, two, three. So it's going to be 9.4230 times 10 to the negative third. The reason it's negative is I moved the decimal in the other direction. Question eight, they give you the answer in scientific notation and they're wanting you to put it in standard notation. And so we're going to just basically do the opposite of what we just did in question number seven. So I'm going to start by writing the number down without the decimal. And I can see that my decimal is going to be moved eight times. And since it's a negative number, it is going to be a number less than one. So I'm going to have like a decimal and a really small and a number after it. So I'm going to move it eight times this way. So if it's here, it started off here. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I put my new decimal and then I'm just going to fill in with zeros. And you should have seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven behind the decimal. So for this number, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to write my number down and I'm going to move in my decimal four times but I know it's a big number because it's a positive exponent. So I'm going to move my decimal that way four times. So it was here. So it's like one, two, three, four. So I'm going to put it there and fill in with zeros. For question nine, I want to introduce you to a cubic centimeter or a cc. Sometimes you'll see a measurement of a cubic centimeter. It's actually very small. And so this is a cubic centimeter. You can write a cubic centimeter, this little bitty square, as cm cubed. Sometimes though, people will say a cubic centimeter is a cc from the initials, a cc. You see this a lot of times if you ever watch medical shows, they'll say, give me 50 cc's of some medicine. So they're measuring out in cc's. But when you have a liquid and you're measuring out cc's, it's the same as one milliliter. And you may have a graduated cylinder or a measuring cup that measures in milliliters, and that's how we measure liquids. And so a cubic centimeter, a cc, and one milliliter are all the same unit. Question number nine wants me to take something that is 7.4 liters and put it in a centimeters cube. This stumps a lot of people, but if you think that a centimeters cube is the same as a milliliters, we can use King Herod to go from liters to milliliters. So if I take 7.4, and this is liters, that's the L, and I am going to the milli, I am jumping one, two, three hops to the right. So you're gonna take your decimal and you're gonna move it one, two, three this way, and just fill it in. So 7.4 liters is 7,400 milliliters or 7,400 cubic centimeters. 
So your answer is 7,400. Question number 10 stumps everybody every year. And so it has so many conversion factors, it is just confusing. But it says a box is measured to have a volume of 11.7 liters. And it wants you to know what its volume is in meters cubed. And so the path for this is always tricky to people because it's hard to see how I can go from liters to meters. But remember what I just said, a centimeter is a milliliter. So I am gonna go from liters to milliliters. Remember a milliliter is a centimeter. And then from centimeters to meters cubed. It's a little confusing. It has a lot of steps. I think that's why it stumps everybody every year. But let's walk through. So I've got 11.7 liters and I'm going to milliliters. So if I'm at liters to milliliters, I'm moving my decimal one, two, three, three places to the right. So I have here it goes one two three eleven thousand seven hundred milliliters eleven thousand seven hundred milliliters is the same as eleven thousand seven hundred cubic centimeters or cc's now from here i'm going to go to meters cubed this is where it gets a little bit more confusing So for this one, when I'm doing cubic units, I cannot use King Herod for this part. I have to just use the conversion units. That way my centimeters cubes will cancel out, right? So I want centimeters to cancel out, but I don't have a conversion unit that has centimeters cubes. So I'm just gonna put centimeters on the bottom and I'm gonna put meters on the top. Now, your book has you saying one centimeter is 0 0.01 of a meter. Go ahead and use that, that's just fine. The other way you could have it is you could say one meter is 100 centimeters. Either's fine, they work out the same. But since I need this to be cubed, I'm gonna be cubing the entire thing. That way I have centimeters cubed on the bottom and I end up with meters cubed at the top. But not only does it cube the unit, but it also cubes the number. Well, this one cubed would be one, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch back to using the unit that your book uses, just so it doesn't confuse you. So one centimeter is 0 0.01 meters. Now one cubed is one, that's pretty easy, right? So let's leave, so we're just gonna cube each of these parts so I can show you what it looks like. So this becomes one centimeter cubed and I have to cube this 0 0.001 meter, and you could just put that in your calculator if you want, and you get 0.001. a very small number. And then the centimeters cubed cancels out, and you get an answer of meters cubed. I know that's confusing. We're gonna get more practice and get to see another one of these problems later on. Just in case you got lost, we went from liters to milliliters to centimeters cubed to meters cubed. Question 11 is a great place to get a lot of practice using King Herod dye, drinking chocolate milk. Except for not using meters or liters, this is the first one that we get where we're actually using the G for grams. So we're going from kilograms all the way across to centigrams. So we're moving to the right and going one, two, three, four, five hops to the right to go from kilograms to centigrams. So move my decimal five. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna fill in my zeros. And that is it in centigrams. We're going from milliliters to kiloliters. So this time we're going from down here in the milli all the way over to the K. We're moving to the left. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're gonna be moving your decimal six places to the left. My decimals here starting out one, two, three, four, five, six. And then fill in with zeros.
So for question number 13, you get introduced to the concept of density. I hope you get to do some of these labs in class because actually they're like some of my favorites. But density is how much matter is packed into like a certain volume of the substance. What I mean by that, it's like if we have a cc of a gold or we have a cc of silver, there's actually a different amount of mass for every milliliter or cc of each substance. Um, and it's actually been calculated or determined in lab. And so we know the density. So one of the things that we know is that one milliliter of water weighs one gram. And so these are some fun experiments where you get to layer different colors of liquids on top of each other. If you calculate their densities and like the most dense liquid will be on the bottom. They're really pretty if you get to enjoy them in lab. Um, and so this question is basically telling me I have a chunk of copper and it tells me it's 20 milliliters. So it's like 20 of these guys. And it wants to know what is its mass? How much does it weigh, so to speak? And they tell me the density of copper is 8.96. So when you have density, the formula for density is mass over volume. I mean, you have to be careful for this because your mass and density is always gonna be measured in grams and the volume is always gonna be in milliliters. And a lot of times a book will try to stump you by giving you your volume either in liters and making you do that first step of converting it to milliliters. So be aware, this is a frequent trick to try to trick you. But it's a pretty simple formula, but one of the ways, and I've got it written up here, I teach my kids to remember this, is I say the DMV. You're all about 10th, 11th grade if you're in America, which means you're really close to the age where you get your driver's permit or you get your driver's license. And to do that, you go to the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles. But in this case, the DMV stands for density, mass, and volume. And so if I am calculating the density of a problem, I'm gonna simply put my hand over the D and you'll see you have mass on top of volume. So that would be mass divided by the volume. But let's say they give me a problem and they're asking me for the volume. Well, I'm gonna cover up the volume and that one would be the mass divided by the density. The other thing that these questions can ask you to solve for is mass. So if you put cover up mass, you have density right next to volume. And so those are multiplied by each other. So let's apply this to question 13. So in question 13, they're asking you for the mass and so mass is equal to the density times the volume. And they actually give you the density of copper. If you haven't learned yet, copper is not CO, it's CU. It's after its Latin name. And density is in grams per milliliter. And I'm multiplying it by the volume, which they give in this formula already in milliliters. And so if I do this right, milliliters will cancel out and I will be left with an answer in grams and that is a mass. When I report this answer, I want to figure out how many significant figures this answer has in it. Well, this one has one, two, three significant figures and this measurement has one, two, three significant figures. So I'm going to report my answer with three significant figures and its mass is 179, oops, 179 grams. So number 14 is another density problem. It gives me the density of silver. It tells me it's 10.49 grams per milliliter. And then I have a sample and the sample that they give me is 9.43 kilograms. So grams, that's a mass. And it's asking me to find the volume. Now we've talked about when you do density, mass has to be in grams. So I'm gonna use King Herod guide and put this first in grams. I'm going from kilo to grams, so my decimal has to go one, two, three steps to the right. No, one, two, three. So that's 9,430 grams. Now I'm looking for volume. So if I cover up volume, I have mass over density. And I know my mass is 9,430 grams. And I know my density.
grands will cancel out. And now I need to know how many significant figures I'm going to report my answer to. So this measurement has one, two, three significant figures. This zero is not significant because it is not the last number to the right of the decimal. And this number has one, two, three, four significant figures. So when you're doing multiplication or division, you're going to report your answer to the least amount. So since I have a three and a four, I'm gonna make sure I only have three significant figures in my answer. Volume here equals 899 milliliters of silver. It's actually a lot of silver. Number 15 is actually a fun experiment if you actually do the experiment, but it basically tells me the mass of a full can of regular Coke is 394 grams. But the mass of Diet Coke is actually less at 355 grams. This is because a Diet Coke uses an artificial sweetener and it has a lesser mass. And the volume of both is 359 milliliters. The question asks, what, like, will it float in water? And so to tell if it will float in water, we need to figure out if it's denser, more dense or less dense than water. And the problem tells you that water has a density of one gram per milliliter. Like this is actually fun if you have a can of Coke and you have a can of Diet Coke to do it and just to see if it works out. But we're gonna have to calculate the density of both the Coke and the Diet Coke. So I'm gonna do the Coke first. And density is mass over volume. So I have my mass and it's already in grams. And the volume is the same for both. I want to report my answer to three significant figures. So the density of a can of Coke is 1.10 grams per milliliter, which if water is one, so this is more dense. So if I put this in water, this would actually sink. So now let's try Diet Coke. So Diet Coke is 355 grams over 359 milliliters. And still with three significant figures, you get 0.989 grams per milliliter. So this is less than one, less than the density of water. So this one should float. It works with Coke. I've tried it with Pepsi, I haven't had the most success, but if you have a hand that Coke, can of regular Coke, it's kind of a fun experiment to do. So this was the last of the comprehension check. Um, I hope you'll follow along with the next video where I will go through the review questions for chapter one.